guys. Today we're going to be ranking Jane Austen adaptations. Yes, like movies and miniseries. Which one will be number one on my list? Well, you'll just have to wait and find out. Will it be Pride and Prejudice? Persuasion? Northanger Abbey? Who knows? Well, I know, I wrote a list down. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to find out, then definitely stay tuned for today's video. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep all of my thoughts on these different movies and adaptations pretty succinct and to the point because otherwise this video is gonna be forever long. Also, I've spoken about many of these in different videos already, but you guys have been asking me about some ones I haven't really spoken about. So I'm gonna be sharing my truthful opinion about those in this video. And I just wanna remind everyone, this is just my opinion. Everyone doesn't have to agree with me. You guys can like whatever you like. You can not like whatever you like when it comes to movie adaptations. This is just my personal list. And also I am very sorry if I happen to criticize something that you like. I have 12 adaptations on this list. I have not seen every Jane Austen adaptation ever made. And I narrowed this list down to true period drama representations of the book. So I'm not gonna be covering like the Bollywood version of Pride and Prejudice or the Utah version though. As someone who's lived in Utah, the Utah version of Pride and Prejudice is, is very accurate to what life in Utah is like. I'm just gonna throw that out there. But starting off with number 12, what is my least favorite Jane Austen adaptation? Well, that award goes to Love and Friendship from 2016 with Kate Beckinsale. I've spoken about this before in movies that are nothing like their book. So Love and Friendship is not the real title of the story. It's actually Lady Susan is what they were adapting for the screen there. So like I talk about my video on how not to marry Mr. Wickham, Lady Susan is a masterpiece of Jane Austen examining how people can manipulate and rewrite other people's realities. And I feel like that was just totally lost on the adapters of Lady Susan. They just turned it into a complete farce. And yeah, it's, it's not my favorite. Okay, so for this next one at number 11, everybody please don't kill me in the comments over this. It's Sense and Sensibility 1995. Yes, the one with Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet I don't know if there's words to express for myself of how much I don't like this adaptation. So I first saw it, of course, as a kid, and I disliked it so much that I put off reading Sense and Sensibility for years because I'm like, I hated the movie. Why would I read the book? Of course, that is never a good reason not to read the book because the book can be infinitely better which it is, obviously, but the, I just really dislike it. And I think as an adult now, looking at what I dislike about it is it doesn't capture the book. Emma Thompson is acting like Emma Thompson. Hugh Grant is acting like Hugh Grant. It's like 1990 stars just put in period costume acting like themselves. They're not portraying the characters Austen wrote. And I think that's a huge hit against Sense and Sensibility 1995. In the number 10 spot, we have Emma from 1996, the one with Gwyneth Paltrow. Thankfully, I had read Emma before I saw the movie. And so from the point I saw the movie, I was like, this doesn't really capture Emma for me. And I was like a little kid when I read Emma and I still was like, this, this is not Emma. So also another true confession that's gonna get me canceled in this video. I really dislike the 1990s Little Women too, for the same reason. Little Women was my favorite book when I was like 12 and 13. And the 90s Little Women just does not capture Little Women. And I feel like the same thing with the Little Women, the Emma and the Sense and Sensibility, which is the casting. I think they were casting these really big stars at the time and they just were not capturing the characters. They were not capturing the book. And there's like this weird 90s aesthetic feel happening that just doesn't jive well with the time period or with how I see the stories. And so I feel like that's why I just dislike all three of those. 
But number nine is Mansfield Park 2007. So I've never seen the movie version of Mansfield Park that came out in like, I think 1999, just because I heard it has some, you know, objectionable content in it. But <laughs> the 2007 miniseries with Billy Piper, you know, the girl off of Doctor Who, I think is what she's most famous for. I feel like nobody's seen this thing. Whenever I mention it, people are like, what? Like in real life, but I'm like, yeah, the 2007 Mansfield Park. It's not great. It's okay in some aspects. I feel like one of the problems is they simplified way too much stuff. Like they don't even have my favorite part of the book, which is when Fanny has to go back and stay with her her birth family for a while and it discovers it's not all sunshine and roses back home. They totally left that out. I feel like the casting could also be better, especially of Fanny. Like I love Billy Piper, but she's just not Fanny. And I think that just, just skewed the entire mini series for me. So I really do think we just really, really need a better version of Mansfield Park to come out. Up next in eighth place, I have Persuasion from the 90s. And in seventh place, I have Persuasion from 2007. So both Persuasions are back to back. I do like the 2007 one slightly more than the 90s one. But again, we just do not have the definitive version of Persuasion yet, I think. And Persuasion's coming out on Netflix next month, I hear. And so I'm like really excited for it, but I'm also super anxious about it. It's supposed to be like witty and modern. And I'm like, how modern are we going? Are we going modern to the point that they're like killing the story or is it gonna be enjoyable? So let's all hope that Persuasion Netflix will, will come through for us here. So up at number six is Emma 2020. I know this is totally shocking and unforeseen that it was this high on the list. As I talk about in my review of this movie, I don't think they captured the heart of Emma or the story, but they did a lot of things really well movie-wise. I think they did really well on storytelling. The costumes and the cinematography is amazing. I think they did well on many aspects, which is why it's ranking this high. Is it the heart and soul of Emma though? No. Okay, now we're getting into some serious territory. We're in the top five here. And number five is Pride and Prejudice 2005. Yes, the one with Kira Knightley. So I don't think I have a lot to say about this because I've already spoken about 2005 Pride and Prejudice and so many other videos, but I do think they did a lot of things really well. And especially for compressing the entire book down into a two hour movie, they still maintained a lot of accuracy and captured a lot of the spirit of the story that way. So what will be number four? Well, if you guessed Northanger Abbey 2007, you would be right. Yes, this is the one with J.J. Field and Felicity Jones. I think what I really love about Northanger Abbey is that they captured the spirit of the book amazingly. And that's hard to do with Northanger Abbey because you have to help the audience understand not only Northanger Abbey, but also the books that Catherine Moreland's reading and her imagination. And I think they just did a fantastic job of it. Did they deviate from the book? Yes, they did. And I feel like there's a few aspects where they really deviated that could have changed the message of the book a little bit or made it more romantic in some ways, I think, than it was. But I really think they captured the spirit and the heart of Northanger Abbey and made it understandable to modern audiences. And of course, years later, my crush on J.J. Field has not stopped. And it stars J.J. Field and Felicity Jones. And I love this adaptation of Northanger Abbey. It's incredibly done. It catches the spirit of the book very, very well. And of course, it has J.J. Field in it. And he's super cute. So you should go watch it. Okay, at number three is my definitive choice for Emma, which is Emma. 2009. I love Emma 2009 so much. When I first saw it, I was like, finally, this is the book I read. This is the story and the spirit of Emma, I think, so well captured. I feel like the casting was really well done. The acting is amazing. And the whole way they approached the story really worked for me. 
Okay, what is number two? This is my second favorite Jane Austen adaptation of all time, and it has to be Sense and Sensibility 2008. I love this version of Sense and Sensibility. I feel like it really does capture so much of the book. Okay, I know it's not in the book that their cottage is by the ocean, but just aesthetically, it's amazing in the adaptation. Of course, it's a mini series. You have a lot longer for the story to play out. And I feel like the casting was really spot on and the actors were able to play the characters Jane Austen wrote. The interesting thing about Sense and Sensibility 2008 is that it has the same screenwriter as the number one miniseries on this list, which I'm sure you guys have all figured out by now, and that is Pride and Prejudice 1995. Is it totally cliche that it's in the number one spot? Yes. Yes it is, but this is still my reality. I'm just a cliched human being. Mm-hmm. There's nothing really much to say about Pride and Prejudice 1995 that has not already been said. Its praises and amazing qualities are well known throughout the Austin world, so I don't know how I can add upon that to anything. So I do think one thing about 90s Austin adaptations and even Little Women, if we're gonna throw that in there, is a lot of people, I feel like, like them because they're nostalgic, they're attached to it, that's what they grew up with, that's what they're comfortable with. Like when I talk to my friends about their love of little women from the 90s, it's like, this is my childhood right here. Like nothing can be as good as this because this was what we had in the 90s. And so sometimes I kind of wonder, it's like, okay, when you're analyzing these movies, are you just doing this from a nostalgic viewpoint or are you actually judging them based on their qualities of, of the movie or the adaptation? And I genuinely don't think that I like 1995 Pride and Prejudice just for the nostalgia. Also, I think comparing it to other adaptations, it does. It just has amazing, sterling, classic qualities to it other than just being what I grew up with. That's my two cents on that. I hope I didn't offend anyone. Let me know in the comments down below what are your favorite Jane Austen adaptations and which books do you think deserve a new adaptation? And one that's just really good. Like I think Persuasion needs a good one. Hopefully Netflix's will be good. Also Mansfield Park definitely needs a new adaptation. We just don't have a great Mansfield Park out. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below and keep having an awesome day because you're awesome. Bye. And I also, I mean, JJ Phil has like one of the best voice ever. And it's not just his awesome British accent. I mean, I just love his voice and he's just cute. So go watch Northanger Abbey.